Okay, I'm just gonna say it. I am like the world's messiest person. If we're glittering in our in the classroom, it's it's gonna be in you everywhere. It's gonna be in your ear, in your belly button, between your toes, right? It is hard sometimes for somebody like me to stay organized and clean during our projects. By the time it's all over with, it just looks like a tornado went off, okay? So today I have for you some of my favorite tips and tricks to stay organized, to keep it clean and tidy so when you're done with your art project, you don't have to spend three hours vacuuming glitter up and paint and all the things. All right, here we go. Hey, my name is Angie and I taught for 25 years. I made a lot of messes in my classroom. In fact, one time we made GAC um, and my principal came in and said, well, you were going to get new carpet next year, but now you're not because obviously you can't handle it. <laughs> and I was like, well, good, because I don't want new carpet because that would make me nervous, right? It was just, it was everywhere. So today I am going to give you some tips and tricks on how to stay nice and neat and time savers. Okay, the first one is when you're doing watercolors with your students, I did a lot of watercolors with my students because I I could get out the paint fast. I felt like it was kind of semi-safe uh, than anything else. Part of their job is to get their watercolors wet, right? So you give them all a cup of water and their paintbrush and then they're trying to get their paints wet and everything like that. Why not? Just buy a few of these at, for each table or a pair of people, take it, and they spray it with the water. Let it set for a second. Here's their their water, because you got it. Oh, I'm good, aren't I? And then they can do the painting with that. So get yourself a spray bottle just like this, and then they can get it wet super fast. Another one is to use a clear cup. Why do you need a clear cup when you're doing watercolors? Well, for one thing, you can see how clean their water is. My students always were responsible for getting up and changing out their water. But sometimes, you know, you have somebody who their water looks like a uh, sludge and they're like, no, it's fine. You're like, no, go clean it up. Or you have somebody gets a little teeny bit pink and then they're like, no, I need to do my, I need to change out my water. No, nope, nope, sit back down, thank you. And another thing is to put a little fill line on the plastic, right? So when they're filling it up themselves, they don't fill it all the way to the top. <laughs> so they fill it just to the fill line. Then you can keep these and you reuse them over and over and over. Can you see that fill line mm, right there? Okay. Continuing with the paint theme. If you're using like temper, tempera paints, I always say temper paints, I don't know why. If you're ever using temper paints, uh, use a plastic baggie and then I just use a hair tie just like that so I could just secure it a little bit, put it around the can, put the paint in. They use it when they're done. You can either zip it up and let it um, stay in there or if the paint is done and it's getting grody, you know how it is. You can just take it and throw it. You don't have to spend 49 gallons of water and six hours at the sink trying to get a can clean, all right? So that is a good little hack. Saves you time, saves you energy. Here's the same thing, but with deli containers. Deli containers are the best because they stack. They have a lid already that you can go ahead and just put right on there. And then you don't have to worry about zipping up your thing again. If you use a Ziploc on a deli container, or Ziploc, sorry. If you use a resealable sandwich bag on a container, it is going to split a little bit, but that's why I use a hairband on there just to secure it so that the, the kids can uh, get in there and be kind of rough with it. It works super great. And honestly, you don't have to change it out that much. It, it stays pretty fresh. And then when they're done with the paints, you can just zip and then 
done. All right. And then easy cleanup. You could do it with those um, pre-made ones that you get from the fancy ones with the, the red paint goes in the jar with the red lid and stuff like that. That's fine. But if you're like me and I, you got a bunch of these around, this is a great tip. Okay. For paper projects, I, this just saved me tons of headache and uh, so in the middle of each group or if your students are in desks each person or group of people they have a garbage bag right uh, and i just like these collapsible ones i also use like hard plastic ones from the dollar store and when they're cutting or they're done they put their stuff in there it keeps everything tidy if you know, you're making a, a snake with 14 dots on it and they're like where's your 13th and 14th dot i don't know it's it's got thrown away and then you look oh well here it is right here okay make a new one or do use this this helps keep everything nice and tidy and then afterwards what i would have my students do is if anything is bigger than the size of your hand it goes in the scrap box because the scrap box is what i used for some of my early finisher activities what you don't know the early finisher activities i will put a link in the description above and um and below to talk about some early finisher activities for you. Where did I get this? Uh, the Target dollar spot area at the beginning of school one year. I got a bunch of them. They are great and they collapsed down so that when we didn't use them I could just crunch them up and shove them. All right. So handy. Okay. The next one is a great one for when you are doing handprint projects. Okay. So handprint hand print projects you, you love the outcome, but you don't so much love the process. So you take your um, wax paper that you have and you just, you prep this kind of fast and you just take your glue and wow, that was kind of a lot. Your glue, it's your paint. And so that's one kid's um, hand print project paper and then another one and then you do it again all right and you just keep doing this until you have if you have 10 students then you need five pieces of paper because this actually made two so when you open it up it's johnny's turn so you open it up he comes over he smushes his hand all around okay all around on here and then he does the fingerprint or the the handprint and then it's and then you can just throw this away all right it's contaminated with his germs but it's susie's turn now she does hers she does hers she rubs her hand on there of course it's down low she does her handprint like that and then you peel it off and you can either do the opposite side put it down and have somebody else do the other side or whatever you like there okay it's super fast to get it prepped instead of having a, a plate or something that's what i used to do right you squirt on a plate or they paint their hand with a paintbrush and then uh, this is a lot easier a lot faster a little prep ahead of time but it works and you're probably looking at this what is this this is a lifesaver too i am telling you so you put your tempera paint in here all right the um, paint goes in this side and then it squirts out that side it does not leak um it comes uh it as as you uh, use the paint it just comes down so you don't ever have to like get it out of the bottle um it's just ready to go and it Literally, the kids can do it themselves, although I would probably not do that. And you can just a little dab, a little dab. So if you're mixing up paint or getting paint ready for a whole bunch of kids and you just go squirt, 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 this 
is amazing. All right. Talk about amazing yarn activities. And you have the big old ball of yarn and you get about halfway through and then it's just this bundle of knots. You're like, mm, make it stop. Or a bunch of kids need yarn all at once. So get your ball of yarn and wrap it on a stick. And then you can have a bunch of different sticks. You can say, okay, here, here's yours, here's yours, here's yours. And if you're like me, it's like uh, our project requires uh, three feet of yarn. Here's the yardstick. You go figure it out yourself, okay? And I would have them do that. Uh, I used these yarn sticks when we did math. So many things that these come in handy for. But you have to make them ahead of time. But they are so worth it. And like these will last for years. You put enough yarn on here and they don't get tangled up. And if a kid gets all crazy, at least it's not one huge ball of yarn and there's not a mass of knots. These are amazing. Okay, yarn sticks. You're welcome. Okay, so another thing that used to drive me nuts, you're doing an art project. It's a big art project, but it's a fun art project. But you always have some stragglers, right? That, oh, they have to redo this. They have to redo that. They can't find this. They can't find that. Meanwhile, you have other students who are completely done and they're sitting there and they're starting to get into some mischief. What do you do with them? You want to still keep them busy? Keep them learning? Well, if you know about the early finisher solution that I did in my classroom, one of the best activities, and I did this after art projects all the time, is this cool little hack right here. So inside all, every student I had, all their little games that they could do, but um, the page that I want to really show you is this one. So inside their early finisher binder, they have a piece of paper, preferably colored, because I would say like, you do an activity with your blue piece of paper. So as you can see, this blue piece of paper has been cut down, actually cut it down just a little bit. So it's a little bit smaller than a regular piece of paper. Cut it down because you're gonna laminate it and then make it a little bigger. And you need a page protector, okay? So what they do is they take this blue piece of paper out of their page protector and they do a little design. Then they put it back into their page protector and they are going to transform it. Those of you who have seen this before, you love this. I've got ha had so many comments of that is brilliant. I know. So they have this and they transform it into something else. I have them usually do the second part with a color other than black or other than what they did this one because then you can kind of see the original shape. So let's just, um, um, oh, it looks like an E or maybe it looks like, oh, yep. Are you seeing it? Okay, I am the world's worst drawer. <laughs> I really am. <sighs> It's supposed to be a mustache, okay? <laughs> okay, don't laugh. Honestly, one time I had my kindergartners fall out of their chair because I made a drawing and they just thought it was the most hilarious thing. Okay, so that is supposed to be a mustache. And so when they get done transforming that, what they do is they do it again, but on the other side. And they try to think of something different. All right. So this time I'm just going to go traditional and do a little wormy. Right. There he is with his little hat on in the grass. And then they can tell a little story about their worm. This guy is Herbert. He um, loves uh, his friend Butterfly. They have lots of cool adventures together. Herbert especially is fond of ice cream cones, which he has spotted an ice cream cone right over here. 
uh, his friend Butterfly says, don't go eat that um, ice cream because it will make you sick. And Herbert's like, I don't really care because I really like ice cream. And then, and see, you can just go on and on. So encourage them to do story with it. Then at the end of art time, and everybody is totally cleaned up, if people have done this, then you can have a short sharing time that um, they can tell their story and show their, their picture, okay? This is a perfect early finisher for any time during the day, and it goes right inside the early finisher binder, so it is ready to go all the time, all right? If you want to know more about lip binders and the early finisher solution, I'll put a link in the description down below. What are some more art hacks? Well, you have probably seen this on uh, YouTube or uh, Instagram or something. How do you know when a glue bottle is closed just by looking at it? There we go. It's not closed now. Now it's closed. It makes a full smile, okay? Very fun, very easy. And last little hack that I saw on YouTube recently. I will put her link in the description down below because she has so many amazing art hacks and classroom management hacks that I think you're really gonna, going to enjoy her. Cassie Stevens, you're amazing. She, I I'm pretty sure it was her who did a glitter box. And so when she does glitter with her kids, maybe this wasn't even her hack. I don't know. I saw this somewhere. But this is basically a craft box, right? That, and then the glitter goes in here and it stays in here, even when um, you don't put it back into the small container. In fact, what I saw was the, um, oh Lord, um, the person did the glitter and just had the glitter in the box, okay? And then what they did is had it as a glitter box. And then when they wanted to glitter, they would just go ahead and um, glitter in the box. And then because the glitter was already in the box, <clears throat> they would just take it and scoop it right in the box. And then it would be done. All right, I think that is brilliant. It just stays right in the box. It doesn't go anywhere. You have a box for um, different kinds of glitter. If you're like me, by like day two of December, all the glitter is the same color anyway. It's a mixture of red, gold, silver, green, uh, black. <laughs> it's just it's just all the colors. So um, I think this is a great easy hack and I think it's going to help you keep your glitter contained a little better than maybe it would have been anyway. So you just close this up, all right, and then this becomes your glitter box, just like that. Pretty cool, huh? All right, I hope those art hacks helped you for your classroom. Tell me down below which one you think will work best in your classroom down below. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure that you do that, all right? My name is Angie. I was in the classroom for 25 years. Remember, the creator of the universe loves you. And if you're a Jesus lover like me, remember to keep him first, keep yourself in his word and praying. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.